Hello everyone and welcome back to Now I Know. Today we are talking about column chromatography, one of the important and very interesting topic to understand. We will see the principle and procedure for this particular chromatography. So let's begin today's video. Okay, so first things first. The chromatography technique, we know that it is a technique that we use for purification of some compounds, right? If we have a sample mix, if we have a sample where we have different molecules or different components in it, and we want to separate these components, that's when we use chromatography. So it's isolation of different components. We want to isolate different components. We want to separate different components in a given sample. That's when we use chromatography it's a purification technique and when it comes to column chromatography as the term itself says we are going to do the purification in a column okay we are going to do a purification with the help of a column now what is a column a column is a tube-like structure. You guys know I'm not that good in uh, drawing, so bear with me. It's a tube-like structure, which is either made up of glass or plastic. Most likely it's going to be glass. And that's what we call column. So the purification happens within this uh, column. And this is what we call column chromatography. Before we go ahead, here's an important information. Uh, An Academy has come up with a combat series that's a completely free series that's starting from 17th of January, 2 p.m. Every alternate Sunday it will happen. You can appear live with other aspirants from all over the India and understand your progress. Uh, you will have the questions very close to what has been asked in your examination and these will be discussed later on in the video also. You can use my code NOTE10 to unlock the series. It is completely free. Also, if you're looking to join in for CSIR net preparation, ultimate course on license CSIR new batch is starting from 15th of January. Join in with my code NO10 to get 10% discount. Link will be in the description box. And uh, our academy has also come up with a new offering for CSIR net iconic. The program is designed to provide you with one step solution for CSIR preparation. It aims at structure assessment and analysis of your pre uh, performance, thereby helping you identify and address the gaps in your preparation all the links and the code will be in the description box do check it out now when we talk uh, about chromatography we know we have certain components that are needed right let's say for example we need stationary phase we need mobile phase we need a sample of course and because we are talking about column chromatography we are going to have a column over here now, when it comes to stationary phase, in case of column chromatography, we are going to use a solid stationary phase. We'll see this uh, just in a while. And mobile phase is going to be a liquid mobile phase. Sample, it is going to be whatever sample that you need to separate it. It could be some chemical compounds, it could be nucleic acid sample, it could be any sample that you're working with. And a column is going to be there it's an instrument that you're going to use for the separation now you know nowadays column chromatography there is also a automatic uh, column chromatography where it's going to be the whole process is going to be conducted in a machine there's going to be a machine that conducts the separation you just have to give commands you give the specific data and it will carry out the process but what we are talking about is manual chromatography that is also done. Uh, so we will see manual chromatography step by step in this uh, particular video. So now that you are ready to uh, you know, do column chromatography, let's assume you have a sample. What are we going to do first? So the first thing first is we need to select what stationary phase we are going to use. Now we are going to use a solid stationary phase here, but how we are going to select it? Now basically selection of stationary phase depends on what kind of a sample you are using and how you want to separate it. Do you want to separate the sample based on its size, based on its charge or based on its polarity? So based on this uh, sample that you have and how you want to separate it is uh, how you select your stationary phase. Generally, you know, when we are working in lab, when you are doing your research, when you are doing your PhD, you have some specific samples and you know what kind of stationary phase you will be needing. Most likely you are either going to use a silica or alumina for example and silica is a choice of stationary phase by and large. So let's say for example you are going to use stationary phase uh, silica in this particular case. 
Now, when you say silica, silica is, you know, generally it's a dry powder that is available commercially in, in a market. So it's going to be a dry powder. So that's how silica is. Now you need to pack your column with this dry powder that is silica, right? So when you have your stationary phase, let's say for example, silica that you're going to use it, you need to pack your column with silica. Why? Because that's going to be your stationary phase you need to pack your column with your stationary phase that is silica you know that's how we do there is a stationary phase that means it doesn't move over which you have your mobile phase mobile phase that means it moves right so we pack our column with silica so we are going to do the next thing is packing the column with silica now after we have selected the stationary phase, we are going to pack the column with the stationary phase. I'll show you the overview of this. Let's say for example, this is our glass column. And at the bottom, the, this is where we are going to collect our uh, fraction of, of the sample after the purification. Now the bottom most part here, we are going to put cotton plug. Okay, that will make sure that whatever we are adding, it's just uh, not simply flowing off. So we are going to put a cotton plug at the bottom that will block the opening now generally this cotton amount of cotton is very much specific and it is uh, fixed based on the type of column you're using it is going to be specific amount because it should not be too light uh, too tight or it should not even be too loose right so a specific amount of cotton you have to put over here then you're going to add sand okay this sand is going to be till this curvy part of the column is going to be packed with sand and this sand is generally acid wash it is commercially available in the market so you're going to add the sand over here then you will pack the column with your stationary face here we just talked about it it is going to be silica okay i'll come to this uh, stationary face silica over here just in a moment and over this stationary phase, you are again going to put a thin layer of sand. So you're just making sure that your silica is packed properly, your stationary phase is packed properly in the column. Now the sand that we are going to use over here is actually an inert material. That means what? It does not react with your silica or it does not react with your sample. It is not going to hamper your purification in any ways. Now, the silica that we are going to add, you know, there can be either dry packing of the column or wet packing of the column. That means the silica is a powder, right? So, you can either just pack it in a dry form. Silica is a dry form powder. So, you can just add the silica in the column, pack it and then you add your solvent solution that is your mobile phase. So, you pack it directly with your silica powder, dry powder and then you add the solvent or solution that is your mobile phase. That's what is called dry packing. The other way is wet packing. That means you take your silica and you mix it with your solvent beforehand and keep it aside. You know, you just mix them before and keep it aside and it will form a slurry. Now, this slurry is what you are going to add in the column. Now, once your slurry is made, you're just going to pack it in the column. You're going to add it in the column and just press it a little bit on the top. Make sure that this silica sits down. And then on top, you're going to add this thin layer just to make sure that it is completely packed. Now, once the column is packed, you have to make sure when the column is packed that there are no bubbles or the silica is not getting too dry. If it is too dry, it will form cracks, right? So the column should not have any bubble. It should be uniform. And or the silica should not be too dry otherwise it will form cracks and if either of the thing is there what will happen it will disturb the purification it will hamper the purification process now once the column is packed we'll move to mobile phase now how do we select a mobile phase basically the mobile phase selection depends on what kind of a solid stationary phase you have used now the first things first the mobile phase could be a single solvent solution or it can be more than one solvent solution that you're mixing, a mix of a solvent solution that would actually depend on what kind of stationary phase you have used. Let's say for example, we are using silica over here and silica is actually a polar stationary phase. It's a polar material. Now, when you have a polar stationary phase, you need a mobile phase that is less polar. 
otherwise what will happen this mobile phase will make bond with stationary phase it will be very strongly bound and the compound or your sample will not move because your mobile phase is bound with your stationary phase so your sample will not be able to move or it will move extremely slow so you have to make sure that since you're using silica which is a polar stationary phase you need a mobile phase that is less polar so your mobile phase should be opposite to your stationary phase so if it is polar you're going to take less polar mobile phase now we are set with stationary phase mobile phase how can we purify the sample so let's say for example my column is packed with stationary phase my mobile phase is also ready now we are going to load our sample from the sides of the column okay you make sure that you load slowly your sample from sides of the column and then you follow it by your solvent solution or your mobile phase so pack your stationary phase pack your column load the sample load your mobile phase so what will happen it will start passing it from the column along with the mobile phase your sample and mobile phase will start moving from the column here are just examples i have given you for the solvent solution that you could use now when this purification is happening when the sample and mobile phase is passing through the stationary phase what happens is you know silica is a polar uh, material okay so when the sample is passing through the less polar molecules that are present in a sample because sample is going to be a mix of different kinds of components in it right that's what we are trying to separate so the less polar molecules that are present in the sample will move faster because silica is non-polar the less polar molecule can easily move across right it will move faster but the molecules that are polar in the sample that would move very slowly because that will take time it will be like binding with silica which is polar so it will be tough for them to move faster so polar molecule will be on the top and the non polar will be moving faster and when you you know fraction by fraction take them out from less polar to more polar fractions will be coming out so your solvent solution that is less polar mixes with the less polar molecules of the sample and it will move fast now the illusion that is happening you know the illusion can be of two types it can be isocratic illusion or it can be a gradient illusion that means illusion of the compound of uh, from the sample the isocratic is when you use when you have a simple uh, sample you know the sample is not not very polar it's not mix of many things it's a simple sample and you can use this with a single solvent solution you just have to add it and collect your uh, sample fractions in the bottom but when you have more complex solution when you have more polar solution that's when you need gradient illusion but in order to elute different kinds of molecule you're going to use more than one solvent solution for example when you add the sample you first use a solvent that is less polar so what it will do is it will elute the less polar molecule of the sample first so you first collect a gradient of less polar molecule with the help of less polar solvent solution next you can change your solvent solution with different concentration you can have one by one add different concentrations of more polar solution and it will elute more polar molecules one by one so you can have different fragments of your uh, sample separated you elute different fragments of your sample based on different polarity now once you've collected this different fractions of the sample based on different concentrations of the solution that you have used you take little bit of the uh, sample or the fraction that you have collected and go for the further identification of seeing what all components you have collected for that you use let's say for example you have chemical compounds that you are working with you use TLC if you're working with a sample with nucleic acid you go for gel electrophoresis and identify and see what kind of what size of compounds you have in it so that's pretty uh, simple that's it uh, basically you have to understand the working of the column the working of stationary phase you use let's say for example silica which you may have a dry or wet method of packing you have your mobile phase which is going to be less polar compared to your stationary phase and based on the polarity based on the type of molecules that are present in the sample you can add either have isocratic uh, illusion or you can have gradient illusion
once you have gradient elution where once you have different fragments uh, fractions of your samples that you have taken you go for further uh, detection of what kind of molecules are present in your sample so that's all uh, for today's video i hope it was helpful and if you have any further doubts put them in the comments below or reach out to me on instagram and do subscribe to the channel for new video every week and i will see you next time until then keep learning